This time I'm going to turn it over to Deacon Tickney as she comes with our scripture. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Dear Lord, God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. Yes. We know that we made, we could not have made it through the night without yes. your loving yes. care and you watching over us. We thank you for this day and all the wonders that you're putting in the day for each one of us. Amen. Amen. We thank you for all the uh, things you've given to us thus far and all the things that thank we are yet to receive. You. We just thank you, Lord. We thank you. Amen. In Christ we pray. Amen. 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 Today's scripture comes from Philippians 4, verses 11 through 13. Not that I speak in regard to me, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need. Yes, Lord. I can do all things through Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many of y'all on the battlefield for the yeah. I want y'all to just help me sing one verse before I turn it over to our praise and worship. Amen. Come on, Come on. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord.
Give God praise on this one. Yeah. I'm sure that he can pray, 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 he can worship him. We give God praise for him. Praise God for all of you, my brothers and sisters, who are here on this Sunday. For those who may be watching virtually, we welcome you as well to SNBC. And we just come to celebrate how good God has been. How good God has been to us. Uh, so we're going to take this time now as we're going to worship to welcome those who may be visiting with us. If you're here and you're visiting with us, uh, we want to take this time to acknowledge you. Uh, so if you're here and you would like to share uh, who, who you are, maybe who invited you, maybe your church home if you have one, uh, we want to welcome you. And uh, we're going to welcome you by waving at you if you choose to stand. Uh, so if you're here and you're visiting with us, please stand. There be none. I guess all are familiar. Let's just turn around and wave at three people. Let them know that you're glad to see them this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God has been so good to all of us. Amen. God has blessed us to come and to worship. And one more Sunday, and we ought to be glad as we are now in the last Sunday of September. And God has been definitely and truly uh, good to us. And so as we come to the house of the Lord, we come with our praises, but we also come bearing gifts. And so it's time for giving. Time for giving. So I want to encourage all of you as we are uh, preparing our hearts and minds for the worship of giving. I want to, to encourage all of you, uh, if you have not, uh, please download our church app, Amen. SNBC Monroe. You can go on the App Store, uh, on the I Apple Store, or you can go to uh, Google Play. You can download the app for the church, SNBC Monroe. Um, there you'll be able to keep current with what's going on, and also... Uh, there's a way in which you can give there. Um, we have a Sunsplash Giving, uh, which is featured right in the app. We also have Givelify for those of you who do e-giving. And we do Text to Give. Uh, text to Give, our number is 734-309-7992. Text the word GIVE to that number, and you'll be able to give accordingly. So however you choose to give, when you choose to give and place it in the basket, or whether you choose to do it electronically, uh, through the many means, like I said, uh, even Cash App, whatever you choose, uh, we praise God for you and your obedience of giving. Now let us stand. Amen. As we prepare to give, let us stand. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this moment that you have set aside for us to come and worship you. Now, God, as we are preparing to come and give our gifts, in faith, Father God, we come asking, God, that you would uh, touch each and every gift and each and every giver. I pray, God, that you would use these gifts so that we may continue to do kingdom work and kingdom building here on this earth. God, we pray now, God, for the givers, that you would bless them, that you would increase them, that you would give them all that they need, all that they desire, Father God, because of their obedience in you and your word. Then, God, we pray for those who uh, want to give, those who are even grudging giving, those who are even holding back, God. I pray that you would touch everyone, God. Amen. God, we know that Amen. you're able to make a way. We know that you're able to change Thank hearts. You. So, God, we trust you to do that. Yes. So, God, we come, God, worshiping you, yes. cheerfully. Yes. Worshiping you, cheerfully. Yes. Worshiping you, cheerfully. Yes. With our gifts. Just to say thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Fresh, we will be directed from the rear by our ushers. Uh, and our officers are going to come and we're going to ask that you would please come and bring your gift. Musicians will give us some good giving music and we're going to bless the Lord. Praise God, praise God. Listen, we got a few announcements. Um, so I'm going to have uh, Deacon Parker, he's going to come and share some information with us. After that, like he's going to come with a quick announcement, and then I'll be back with a few more things. If you guys haven't heard it, it'll be out there within the next couple of days. On Tuesday, 
uh, October 5th at the MCOP Opportunity Center, we will have a forum called Meet the Candidates, where all candidates from the city council and the mayor's race and the mayor will be on hand, and we will have some questions that we will present to them. Um, I will tell you that you guys need to be out there so you can be informed on who your candidates are um, and who are you going to vote for so you can get a look. I don't know how many times they've had candidate forms, but usually when they have them, they have them at the community college. I don't know if you know, but we want to bring it close to this community right now because there's some things happening within our community that needs to change. Um, one of those is all this shooting that's going on over here. So that is going to be one of the questions that we target with these candidates. What are you going to do to make it safer? on this side of town with all this violence that's going on. Amen. So I ask that you be there at seven o'clock as we will be able to ask some questions for these candidates and you'll be able to get a feel for what these candidates are talking about uh, and follow these candidates and see if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Amen. If they're already in incumbent, they in there, you know their track record, if they're new, um, candidate, you'll be able to see how they answer the questions um, and move forward so you can be informed when it comes time to vote. Amen. Amen. So October 5th, Tuesday at 7 o'clock at the MCOP Center. Amen. 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 Next Sunday is, um, well, next week uh, will be October. And next Sunday, which is first Sunday, will be where we celebrate uh, breast cancer awareness. Amen. Amen. Um, Amen. We will um, be celebrating that on the first Sunday. So I'm asking everyone, including the men, um, to wear if your different shades of pink. I know men usually wear their pink shirts and things of that nature. That's perfect. Uh, but ladies, we would ask that you wear any kind of pink that you have, whether it's uh, soft, a soft pink, a pastel pink, a, a fuchsia pink, a, whatever. Just make sure that you have your pink on uh, because we want to bring awareness to this um, topic. We also will be honoring survivors. So if you know of anyone, man or woman, um, I know that it's very rare that men get breast cancer, but men do get breast cancer. And if you know of anyone that has had breast cancer, uh, that is going through breast cancer currently, please let me know who they are. I want to um, honor our survivors, but I also want to pray for those who are um, currently dealing with breast cancer. So if you know of a survivor, you know of anyone who is currently going through breast cancer, please give me their name. Um, and if they have a picture, please send me their picture as well. Currently, I have no names. Uh, for survivors or anyone else who might be going through breast cancer. So please, please let me know. I know it's people in the community or if it's not people in the community, someone you know, just let me know because I just want to uh, know who our survivors are, honor them, and pray for those that are still walking through this disease. Amen. Amen. Also, um, asking that you wear your pink, but also if you um, know of a breast cancer foundation, a reputable one, Please let me know because we do want to make a donation uh, yeah, from amen. the Central Women's Ministry amen. to a reputable uh, breast cancer research amen. foundation amen. Uh, to continue, amen. To continue um, the research so that hopefully we can get a cure. Hopefully, prayerfully, if we keep praying and doing what we're supposed to do. Okay? If you have any questions or anything, uh, make sure you call. Um, make sure you see me. You can call me. You can text me, however you want to do it. But also, uh, please be aware, ladies, that I may have a little short meeting on Saturday, this coming Saturday, just to go over uh, for next Sunday. Thank you so much. Come on, let us put those blessed hands together. Y'all must not be blessed. I said, put those. Oh, okay, y'all sound like, okay. Now y'all sound like y'all know Jesus. Okay. Amen. Um, again, I will not stop until the day is here. All right? It is time for us to get ready to honor the man and the woman of God. Amen. Come on, I'm talking about y'all pastor, y'all first lady. Y'all gave him some headaches, some burn They want to continue to pray for you. Hallelujah. Amen. They only ask for one Sunday of a year, and that's in November. Amen. So let us prepare for the terrible twos. Amen. And we pray for them that they won't be terrible. Amen.
Because I know I'm a headache all by myself. Amen. Hey, hey, y'all, it was too many amens on that part. Amen. Uh, okay. Because y'all was some headaches too. Amen. So let us get ready to honor the man and the woman of God. Amen. So I want to share uh, a couple things um, that has been a blessing. Uh, so yesterday, our men, we had a wonderful time hanging out at Buffalo Wild And uh, it's a blessing because uh, for, for a little while, we've been hoping to get somebody who will take, take charge and, and lead it, uh, other than me, uh, other than Deacon Parker. Amen. You know, Deacon Bird, he got he got ordination to study for. Amen. Uh, Amen. So we, we thank God for Brother Seal. Amen. Take leadership of our men's ministry. So we look forward Amen. to uh, doing more. Amen. We thank God for that. And then yesterday, can I share something with y'all? We saw a miracle yesterday. All right. Amen. We saw a miracle yesterday. Uh, during our fellowship, we were uh, graced by the presence of, of Brother Terry T. Amen. Amen. We sat, we talked, watched a little football, and can I share with you? To, to, to know the testimony of where he was yeah, yeah. and to see him on yesterday yeah. filled my heart with joy. Yeah. And it also uh, reminded me uh, that we, we serve a God who's still working. Yeah. Yeah. So when we sing songs like the blood still works, it still works. Miracles are still taking place. In 2021, miracles are still taking place. And so we were blessed yesterday just by the fellowship. And so uh, men be on the lookout. I think we got a couple more things coming up. Uh, so men be on the lookout. And our essential women got off and running uh, last year. They haven't looked back. And so we're we going to catch up now. And so I'm just so glad about that. I just wanted to share uh, about this fellowship and about uh, the miracle that we were able to be in the presence of. Uh, also, we are, again, this Bible study this week. Uh, last week we discussed um, biblical theology. Uh, as we're going through this series on Christian theology, last week we discussed biblical theology. This week we're going to discuss historical theology. And basically what we're learning is how life shapes how we see and view God. All right. uh, so we learned last week on how um, going through the Bible and the way that the writers write and things of that nature, how they shape how we witness and see God. And so now we're going to also look at history, uh, not only uh, through the lens of the Bible, but also through the lens of, of history as a people. Uh, see how history has shaped uh, our view and our relationship with God. So I invite you to make sure that you get on on Wednesdays at 6.30. The link will be going uh, out on Wednesday. Uh, we don't send out no sooner than Wednesday because I know y'all get it on Monday or forget where it's at. So we send it out on Wednesday to make sure that it's fresh. So again, please join us on Wednesdays for our Bible study. And then lastly, uh, I just want to put a couple bugs in your ear. Uh, as we are in this last Sunday of September, um, we need to start preparing ourselves now. Last year, we were able to be a blessing uh, to families in the community. Amen. Um, and so well, last year, you all said it felt good to do so. You wanted to do it again. Amen. So start preparing now uh, so that we can begin to uh, get our boxes in place. Uh, we're going to check again to see if we can if we can still do that partnership with MCLP with the turkeys. Uh, last year we were able to give entire boxes, including the turkey away. Uh, so we want to continue to do that. Uh, and so I'm telling you now, start preparing. 
um, because that's something that we want to do. Uh, and then also uh, in the month of October on that last Sunday, uh, it's a fifth Sunday. Uh, and so uh, we're working to come up with an idea uh, for our youth. I haven't talked about it with our leaders. So I'm going to talk to them first, and then I'll get back to you on next week. Um, but we want to do something um, similar to what we did for Easter. Um, and so we're going to talk it over uh, with our deacons and our trustees and our leadership. Uh, but I think it will be a blessing as well as Mr. Childs. And so we're going to uh, talk a few things over. But I want you all to be prepared uh, to have some donations for the last Sunday in October. Now, if you look at your calendar, you know what day that is. So you already know what kind of donations I'm talking about. So be prepared uh, to bring some donations uh, as we put some things in place. All right? All hearts and minds clear? Amen. Amen. It is prayer time. It is prayer time. So as we do uh, custom, uh, for those who are standing in the need of prayer, we take this time now where you can come to the altar if you choose. Or you can just stand where you are if you're able to. You can just stand where you are and pray with us. Um, but if you choose to come to the altar, you may come to the altar. It is prayer time. forgiving us because Father we know that we have fallen short we have not always done what you have required of us and so God we come confessing our sins to you asking that you would forgive us that you would cleanse us that you would shape us and make us into what you would have us to be and that you would strip us of our fleshly desires and strip us of the things that tear us away from you so that we might be in good relationship with you. God, as we come to you this morning, we all come with our own issues. We all come with our own desires and wants. We all come Bearing something. Yes, Lord. Yes. 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 But Father, we know one thing. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. That no matter what we may be bearing right now, yes. no matter what we may be carrying yes. right yes. now, yes. Yes. that you are powerful enough to handle it. That you are powerful enough to heal it. That you are powerful enough to fix it. That you are powerful enough to change it. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to this altar bringing everything to you. And, God, we leave everything at this altar. God, the burden is too hard to carry on our own. Father, the burden is too hard to carry. And we don't want to take it back to our seats. 
God, we want to have enough faith in you to be able to just leave everything at your altar. So, Father God, we leave all of our sicknesses, all of our illnesses, all of our troubles, all of our worries, all of our confusion, all of our chaos. We leave it here at this altar. We ask you, God, now to touch it. We ask you now, God, to do what only you can do. Because, God, we just believe by faith that if we bring our problems to you, if we tell you all about our troubles, if we tell you all about our struggles, and if we're totally honest with you, we believe, God, that you have the power to change it. And so, God, in the name of Jesus, here is our issues. In the name of Jesus, here is our sickness. In the name of Jesus, here is our, our, our problems. In the name of Jesus, we leave them right here at this altar. And, God, we're not going to carry it back to our seats. We're not going to take it home with us. But God, we're going to leave it right here at this altar. We're going to leave it right here at this altar. God, we trust you. We trust you. And so God, in the name of Jesus, as we leave this altar, we leave the altar saying, thank you for healing us. Saying, thank for delivering us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for opening doors for us. Thank you for the victory. We say thank you in the name of Jesus. We declare our victory in the name of Jesus. We declare
your word. We thank you for your word that became flesh. And for that we praise you. Now God, as we stand at this moment preaching, we ask God that you would hide us behind your cross. Please look behind all of my faults and see the needs of your people. I pray, God, that you take my mind, let me think your thoughts, take my words, let me preach your words, you yes. and me in spite of me. Yes. There's someone who is in need of a word today. Yes. Yes. There's someone who needs to be challenged on today. Yes. So, God, I pray that you would allow your word to do all that you set it out to do. Yes. Yes. Thank you. So, God, in this moment, we ask that your spirit fall fresh in this place. Yes. yes. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. It's in yes. Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Yes. Amen. For the benefit of you who have your Bible, I ask you to travel with us to the book of Leviticus. Book of Leviticus. Chapter number 19. Leviticus chapter number 19. I want to lift up just a couple verses while we're there. I'm going to be reading to you from the New Living Translation today. I pray that you follow along with whatever version the Lord has blessed you to have. If you are able to, I ask you to please stand if you are able to. Your text should read something as such. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 33. Do not take advantage of foreigners who live among you in your land. Treat them like native-born Israelites and love them as you love yourself. Remember that you were once foreigners living in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord, your God. Just for a few moments, I want to talk to you from this thought of God's response to the border crisis. God's response to the border crisis. Last year, I was disturbed as I watched television while we were in the midst of a pandemic. I was disturbed to see that there were children who had been separated from their parents. And these children that had been separated from their parents, mostly being of Latin descent, had been placed inside of cages. Children had been placed inside of cages. And this disturbed me to watch this and witness this and then to hear of the lack of explanation as to why these practices were taking place and yet to have an administration that continued these practices even though there was outcry, even though it was brought to light. Uh, it brought me to a place of questioning how in the world can this nation claim that we love God and we do things like this. All right, all right. And at the time, I blamed it on that previous administration. Well, brothers and sisters, a few weeks ago, something else happened at the board. Our brothers and sisters from Haiti tried to gain entry into the United States. But the only thing this time, it was a little different. It wasn't the cages that we saw. But what we saw were images of Border Patrol agents on horseback riding around with whips, chasing Haitians as if it were back in the times of slavery. Uh -huh. It was the scene of a plantation. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And for the, this, it really troubled my soul once again. And while last time I blamed it on the former administration, this is a new administration. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
And so I have to be fair. If I'm going to be prophetic in my ministry, I have to be fair because this was a failure on this previous administration. And so as I viewed these images and as I sat and I processed, again I had to question, how can this nation that claims that we love God do things as such. How, how can this nation? And then as I began to think, I understood uh, that the foundation of this nation has been built on practices as such. Practices that focused on demeaning those who did not look as others, focuses on demeaning those and oppressing those whose skin had been kissed by nature's sun. That has been the fundamental difference uh, or the fundamental makeup of this nation. And yet we constantly claim that we are God's nation. Well, brothers and sisters, as I thought through these things, uh, I had to go to my Bible because when I'm troubled, I go to my Bible because I need to hear what God is saying to me. And God arrested my attention right here at this text. He arrested my attention right here at this text uh, because he wanted to remind me of what he said. Brothers and sisters, uh, as you read the Bible, you will understand and you will learn uh, that this is not the only text in which God repeats this statement of how you ought to treat strangers or how you ought to treat the foreigners in your land. Uh, in this particular text, God has just moved on Israel's behalf. He had just brought them out of slavery in Egypt in which they were bound under Egyptian slavery and after their crying out for years, God decided that it was time to bring them out of slavery. And so he sent his prophet by the name of Moses to be the liberator, to bring his people out of Egypt. God sends Moses to bring the people out of Egypt. The people of Egypt were crying out to God and God assigns Moses to be their liberator and he pulls them out of Egypt. He allows for them to go across the Red Sea. He allowed them to go across the Red Sea on dry ground. All the while once they made it to safety then God allowed that same sea that made a highway for them to be the sea of death for Pharaoh and his army and they were drowned in their army so in, that, in the water and so at that point God allowed them to experience their own freedom and so after God allows them to escape or allows them to have their exodus and he tells them now now that I have delivered you you are my people and so if you are going to be my people. I need you to live by a different standard than what you lived in while you were in Egypt. And so I'm calling you to live a better life than what you lived back in Egypt. Am I preaching to anybody on this morning? Because God has pulled you out of the Egyptian places of your life. God has pulled you out of places that have had you oppressed. Places that have had you bound your sin that has you bound. God has pulled right. you out and right. made you free. And now that right. God has made you free, he's saying to you, I need you to live your life better than what you lived back then. Amen. And so he said to the children of Israel, listen, I need you to be a holy people. I need you to be a sanctified or set aside people. I want y'all to understand sanctified just means set aside. Doesn't mean that you don't have as much Holy Ghost as anybody else. It just means that God has called you out for a purpose. And so we being children of God, God has called all of us out for a purpose. And so he says, I need you to live differently than how you lived in Egypt. And so God begins to speak through Moses and he begins to give him some law, the Levitical law, and he gives them some laws and decrees on which they should live and how they should live to show that they represent him as their God. Yes. And so this is where we find ourselves in the text on this morning because God is sharing with Moses what he needs him to say to the people and then he gets to this part where he says, 
if there are foreigners or strangers among you, I need you to treat them with love. So how then, brothers and sisters, all right, all right. if we are a God-serving nation, how then can we remain silent when we see others who are treated just as badly as we were treated before? Now, nevertheless, brothers and sisters, we are still suffering some harsh treatment in this nation just based on our skin color. But yet, how can we remain silent? And so, brothers and sisters, if we are going to be children of God, we have got to learn that God shows his love not by the color of your skin or where you come from, but God shows his love by his compassion. When you read the New Testament, you'll find that Jesus often moved based upon compassion. And so if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, if you believe that Jesus is the triune God or the trinity of God, God in person as the Son, Jesus Christ, if you believe that, then you understand that this is a natural attribute of God which shows compassion. How can you love God? And whom you have not seen. That's right. That's right. When you cannot love your brother and whom you see dead. How can we as a people or as a nation claim to love God? See him every day. But yet treat people differently because they were not born within the borders of this nation. God sends warning. He sends reminder, yeah. letting them know, hey, listen, uh -huh. don't get so high on the hall That's because right. you too right. were once foreigners right. living in the name in the land of Egypt, and I was your God, and I had to deliver you. Thank you and brothers and sisters, yeah. I don't understand what well, pastor. This is a sermon. For the administration, Pastor, we, we didn't do none of this. We, we saw it on TV just like you saw it. So uh, you, you preach it to the choir, Pastor. I don't know why you're telling us this, but listen. The thing is, some of us Everybody. Everybody. Come on. are also in this text. Uh, yes. Because some of us have created our own borders. Some of us have decided who we feel is worthy uh -huh. and who we feel is unworthy. Right. Uh -huh. And we treat people differently based on how we view them. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. All right. We don't see them through the lens of God. Uh -huh. But we see them based upon their past. Yes. We see them based upon where they are in their life. And we begin to make them foreigners to us, although we may have known them all of our lives. We begin to make them foreigners to us because we don't like the life that they live. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. And with that same press, with, with, that, with that same conviction, God is calling for us to love them. What does it mean? To love them, love them who, who are strangers, uh -huh. them who don't smell like us, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. them who you think need to be over here across the tracks at the shelter, uh -huh. them, uh -huh. them who have a track record of alcohol abuse, uh -huh. them who, you, who have a track uh -huh. record of uh -huh. substance abuse, uh -huh. them, we, we create borders for them. If we are going to be the church that God has called us to be, yeah. we have got to learn to love them yeah. as we love ourselves. That's what the text says. I'm not telling you nothing strange. God is calling us to a place of love. God is calling us to a place of bringing in our brothers and sisters. And so if we want to sit in here Sunday after Sunday saying, let's grow, let's go, let's grow, there is no growth if we can't extend a hand to our brothers and our sisters just because we don't like where they are. 
out loud. So the place, the place that God is calling for us to go. You may see some folks that you may not agree with. You may see some folks that may not smell as pleasant as you want to. You, you, you may see some folks who may not dress as well as you think they should. You, you may see some folks who may not love like you think they should. But the true reality is, is they are all God's creation. Because if we read our Bible and we believe that God created humanity in the beginning, then if we believe that, then we have to understand that everyone is God's creation. Therefore, we cannot put up borders against people based on where they are in their lives. God wants us to show them love. God wants us to pull them in. That's what a growing church looks like. Yes, a growing church comes from going yes. out yes. and then bringing in. That, that's what a growing church looks like. And the problem is, church, sometimes we claim we want to grow, but we don't want to go. No, we, we want to go to the places where the people who don't look like us are. No, we, we want to stay in the church and we want God to send them to the church while we sit back and say what we're doing as a church. But God says go, which means in order for us to go, that means that we have to tear down the walls of our borders. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all might not like this today, but yeah. I know I'm right. Yeah. We've got to learn to get beyond our vices. Uh-huh. We gotta learn to get beyond our prejudice. Uh-huh. And we gotta learn to see people for who they are. Yeah. People as individuals who need a savior. People as individuals who need to have a relationship yeah. with Jesus Christ. We've got to learn, yeah. 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 learn. learn. what it means to love the stranger. Yeah. 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 What does it mean? To love the foreigner. What does it mean? And what it means, brothers and sisters, is at some point, if you are really doing the mission of Jesus Christ, at some point, your church should look multicultural. At some point. Now, now, now you know me. You know I love my people, and you know uh, that, that I I love uh, Black Liberation theology. But I also understand what God says. Yes, sir. Yes. God's word says that we are to love oh, yeah. our brothers and our sisters. Yeah. And so what that means is, no matter where they come from, That's right. That's right. That's right. Jesus died for them. That's right. That's right. That's right. No matter what they did. Jesus died for them. And so, brothers and sisters, I'm not going to hold you too much longer, but I need you to understand uh, that we all have borders. And we all have a border crisis going on. And God is speaking to us in our border crisis, and what he's saying to us, brothers and sisters, is we've got to remove our border patrol. Because if his word is going to go forward, if his word is going to permeate throughout Monroe, if we are going to be a beacon of light and hope in this community, we can't keep putting up borders to make people think that that's second I can't go here. I don't got my life together yet. I, I, I got to put this down first before I go there because when I go there, I know the people in there. They're going to look at me like this if I go in there the way that I am. And so I need to get myself together. All the while, they're struggling trying to get themselves together. But the reason why God called us here is so that we can say to them, come on in while you still messed up. You, you don't have to worry because the God that you serve is able to Remind you all. Um, God says here in the text that you too mm-hmm. 
who wants to need you. Yeah. Come on, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's it. But I am the Lord your God. Yeah. Um, Y'all missed that, okay? Um, so, uh, we too, while we got our nose up, come on, Pastor, come on. While we done been saved for five good years, oh, and we done erased the last 30 years, oh, I didn't talk about that. Yes, sir. and we got our nose up, yeah, come on. God says, I remember where you were. Yeah. And I remember what I had to do on your behalf. I, I remember that I had to send my son down to this earth to die on the cross at Calvary because you were so messed up. You were caught up in your addiction. You, you, you were caught up out there. You were the one that was calling you. You were the one that was abusing alcohol. You were the one that was abusing drugs. You were the one that was lying. You were the one that was gossiping. You were the one that was backbiting. Y'all see the borders? There's people lined up yes. 
to get into the nation, but they can't because there's a border that's prohibiting them from getting through. There, there's a convoy that's stopping them from getting through. But God says, I need the convoy out the way so the people can come. This thing is bigger, bigger than us. This thing is bigger than me. God says, open the door. All right, all right. Now listen, I know y'all, y'all might say, Pastor, you tripping. But one thing you ought to know, whenever God tells me to say something, whenever God tells me to do something, I'm going to do it. So this is the word for the house today. You needed it. That the border crisis at second is over. If there's one who's here today, and you do not know Jesus in the midst of your sin. If there's one who's here today, good work. And you desire to align yourself with the ministry of second. I invite you, my brother, my sister, to come. Is there one? Is there one? On my left, if you say, you know you say, we can't nobody tell you different. You may be seen it. The struggle is over. The struggle. Let's go. 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 Let's go.